tarmac and get on your local private plane. But if you are going to fly domestically through some of our larger airports, such as the Atlanta, Hartsfield, Jackson International, I suggest to you that you get there at least two and a half hours to three hours early from your flight time, departure time. Two and a half to three hours. Reason being is because you may not know how long the different lines, it's going to, the security lines going out to the different terminals is going to be. We don't know if they're going to be understaffed. We don't know if everybody's going to be getting a pat down. We're not sure if everybody's going to be getting off the scans. But I would just suggest you go ahead and take the scan if you want to get through it without the hassle of being patted down. Because understand one thing about flying on our, inter on our airlines uh, domestically, that it is not a right. I'll say it again. It is not a right. It is a privilege to fly. And yes, there are rules to privileges that you have in this country. So just be prepared for that. My suggestion is um, those who aren't too body conscious, go ahead and do the full body scan. Go in, put your hands up the way they tell you to. Turn around. Bang, bang, bang. You're out. Yes, you're going to have some pictures of your body, but guess what? You ain't at home. You, people have seen your body before. Please believe me. You've taken your physical. You've been into movies. Somebody has seen your body, so let's just keep it real and be involved about it. So that's one thing about air travel. B, another thing about air travel, make sure that you check your bags and your particular airline, because some, some airlines are charging for you to carry extra luggage. Some of the charges with your first bag and your second bag. Southwest is the only one that I know now that advertises they don't charge for either one of your bags. But also be prepared to check your weight limits on it. Meaning that if you have got to take a lot of stuff when you go abroad, I suggest you ship it in advance of you. Meaning that you ship it to the address where you are going to be. If you're going to be in a hotel, you need to call when you get those reservations, uh, when you reserve those reservations with your car, you need to find out where the concierge, how is it that they can accept luggage because they will accept your luggage at the hotel at the concierge's uh, desk. Sometimes they may have restrictions to say uh, it's the same day that you get there that you may have it done, but I suggest that you be able to definitely ship it in advance of you. That way you don't have to worry about it. Number one, a, your luggage getting lost with the airlines because, yes, the airlines still lose, on average, of a million bags of luggage a year. So they, they still do, even with that. It's been more efficient now because we've had some economic challenges and not that many people have been flying in consistently. So we've had a different, um, we've had, they haven't lost quite as much, but they still lose and they still have to deliver. So A, try to ship your bag ahead of you. You know, and use somebody that you can track it online from your cell phone, from your laptops, or from your hotel rooms that you can get some free internet service and track it just to see where it is. And make sure that they have a good signature and you have the, the, the correct address, even down to the standpoint of a contact person there that you can uh, uh, have it shipped to. So make sure you do that. Ship your stuff in advance. Or A, break, sure, make sure you break your stuff down. And if you're traveling, and we're using uh, tips for travel today, be sure that A, minimize what it is you're going to carry. Be very specific about your day that you're going to be there so that way you can get a change of clothes. And I suggest you have at least one change of clothes in your toiletry in your carry-on luggage. Reason being is if they just so happen to lose your luggage that you have all of your clothes and your toiletry, you will be buying those again. You have a chance to be reimbursed, but guess what? Why not have your toiletries on your person? Meaning that if with a lady, you will have it in probably your purse or your or, or your uh, your personal lug, personal piece of a, uh, a luggage item. And be mindful that the airlines now are even trying to charge for your particular personal items, uh, luggage. Not your purse can be may not be counted, but if you have an additional bag with that, even your laptops can be counted as another piece of personal luggage. So be the airline restriction flying uh, weight limits and baggage limits are very, 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 very uh, complicated now. So check ahead of time, find out. B, if you're traveling uh, on the road, if you're traveling on the road in car, by car, which is probably going to be, uh, for the most of us, 
with uh, the holiday or the holiday season. Uh, some of us that just hit the road uh, here through the, uh, this past uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, a lot of people got on the road. And even before you get on the road, A, be sure if you're not renting a vehicle, be sure if you're using your own POV, personally owned vehicle, be sure that you A, have that car service or make sure that you have someone that's qualified to do what we call PMCS, Preventive Checks, Maintenance, and Services. Meaning that these are some things that you or individual close to you can do at home. Meaning that you check things such as your horn, your headlights, your tail lights. Meaning that you get in the car and you step on the brakes, you turn on the lights and be sure that your, your turn signals and everything works. You'll be surprised how many people hit the road, don't even check to see if their horn works. Because we know during the holidays, a lot of traffic out there, there's a great chance or a greater chance for you to basically have to use it. Be sure that it works before you go. Because it could be something as simple as a, 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 a fuse. And a fuse may be, a fuse is probably no more than a dollar. If you need a, a couple of fuses for that. So check, check those for you. Check your lights, check your horn, check your interior lights and things like that. Check your fluid in your car. Check your oil level. Check your radiator. Mind you, notice you check your radiator when it is cold, meaning when your car is sitting overnight, it's probably the first thing you want to check in the morning is your oil and your radiator. Check your oil level. Check your power stand fluid, your brake, your brake fluid, and if you have an automatic vehicle, you want to check your transmission fluid. And if you're unclear on how to check these, check with someone that's uh, in your uh, local uh, automotive stores, such as your pet boys, your auto zones, they can probably tell you how, or you actually, um, you actually may be able to um, do this yourself. But these are just some simple preventive checks, maintenance, and services that you can do for your own vehicle to ensure that. And the one thing that you want to definitely consider is definitely consider, uh, definitely consider checking the air in your tires and make sure you got the proper uh, air pressure there. A is going to help you with stability. Uh, in your uh, your handling on the road, your braking, and your gas mileage, which is probably most important for most of us. And what you may want to do also at this time is make sure that before you get on the road, get you some fuel injection cleaner, get you some gas treatment, and put this in at the when, when your car when your when your fuel level is is low, almost empty, and you want to pop this in just before you top off. This can prevent you from having to spend money on say a higher octane, uh, octane if, you don't necessarily, if you do burn that, then it may save you some dollars with that. By putting that, that, fuel, uh, that fuel treatment in, or that fuel injector service in, it can definitely probably add some more miles per gallon to your, to your vehicle, which definitely help out in the long run. So those are just some small things you can do for your own personal vehicle. Be sure that you may have at least your first aid kit in your car if you're traveling. First aid kit, sometimes it may not be for you. It may be that you all come upon somebody in an accident and they may need it. So at least if you have a first aid kit, if you don't necessarily need it, it also puts you in a position to help someone else that may need some help on the roads. Uh, and, and you can get basically these small first aid kits from your local or drug store, uh, Walmart, uh, other places, Target and whatnot. And you can find them over in your uh, in, in the, in the uh, uh, area where you have the uh, vitamins and the farm near the pharmacist for the most part. But check a first aid kit out. You probably want to have them for the road. Also, you want to definitely probably have a small tool kit. Something a simple tool kit that you've got a flathead, a screwdriver, some screwdrivers, some socket wrenches, some pliers, uh, some tape, and then some jumper cables at minimum. Because you never know that you may not necessarily know how to work it, but believe me, if you leave your lights on, it would be so much easier for somebody to come to you and say, wow, I wish I had some jumper cables. And you can say, good, I have mine. Could you give me a jump now? Because that happens to us a lot of times. We're not even prepared to help ourselves, but if we are prepared to help them, whether we know it or not, having the right tools a lot of times can get you help and move you on your way a lot faster. So we just want to talk about that for our general, um, general uh, travel automotive things that we have for all our motor vehicles. If you're traveling by train, especially if you're using Amtrak. Um, we have a question. Yes? Um, what would you suggest if you're traveling by a road um, with the uh, frigid uh, conditions, the weather conditions right now? But is there anything I can take in my car just in case 
Yes. Um, the question is, being that we're probably going to be traveling during the holiday season, it's going to be cold in most of the country. She was asking me, what, what, uh, what would she suggest you uh, take on the road? We always suggest that you take at least two blankets, two blankets that you would have, that uh, you would have in your vehicle. A, it could help in case you're broke, if you break down on the side of the road and, or, your, or your air goes out, you can at least have a blanket to wrap yourself in in enough time. Or for what? Once again, to help assist somebody else, if they break down and you come upon them, and you may need them to have some more. Uh, and, you know, have them sit some blankets. They're blankets, folks. Some blankets that you might have to leave with somebody. So you definitely want to have you some road, road blankets. The other reason why you want to have road blankets is A, if you want if you happen to have a, a issue and you need to get under your car or you need to jack up your car and get down on the ground and it's ice cold, guess what you pull out? You pull out the blanket. So what? You don't catch a cold being on that ground. So definitely you want to have a blanket. Also, like I said, a first aid kit is definitely one. Uh, a small tool kit with some simple, uh, some simple uh, tools in it along with some jumper cables. But also um, some fuses. Because too often on the road, a lot of times we, we have headlights that go out, taillights that go out, horns that go out, radios that go out, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of times this can be solved by simply fuses. And you can get fuses, a multi-pack of different ones, everything from your uh, five, 5 amperage uh, owner to your uh, 75 amperage uh, fuses. You can get these things from normally under anywhere between you know two to five dollars or two to six dollars for a multi pack. I suggest a multi pack because therefore, if you have a different fuse that goes out that's a different amperage, you don't have all 20s that you just bought and you need a 30, or uh, you or you need a 40 and you got all 10. Get you a multi pack and it may have one to two of each in the in the particular ones that are most common for most cars. So that's just some suggestions for it. And also, just getting back to real quick about that, any more for automotive? Any more questions? Traveling automotive? Okay, okay. We're going to get back to uh, real quick. If you're going to be traveling, I say Amtrak. I have researched a little bit about traveling with Amtrak. Amtrak, for the most part, their reservations and you know, it's just like the Air Force for the most part, meaning that you need to book them in advance as far as you can, and you need to be definitely conscious of. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, if you have to do uh, transfer to different places across the country, just depending on how far you're traveling, uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a method that uh, a lot of Americans haven't had the uh, had the joy of doing, and I, I myself personally am definitely going to be doing probably trying that in the next couple of years, so going by Amtrak uh, to just try. I want to travel across, across the country, so I've done a little research about it, but definitely plan ahead. So anyway, be sure that you can have someone to you know drop you off at there. They, uh, at the station because I don't think they have necessarily a uh, long-term parking at Amtrak stations and I'm not aware if you are, you know if they do. I know here in the Metro Atlanta they don't necessarily have them at the, uh, at the train depot that's here, uh, long-term parking. So be, be ready for someone to drop you off there so you don't have to leave your vehicle and possibly work by getting towed. But you prepare for that in much the same way. Um, I didn't, there were some restrictions on luggage on the side of the luggage just because of the, uh, the, the, the compact of it. So check your luggage that way. And that's what I have for that. And um, just in short, in closing, I just want to say, we just want to like to share a lot of information with uh, some of our members and uh, people who support uh, 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 George Entrepreneur today. We just want to share some information to be helpful for them so that they can do things in their family, in their lives, in their business to make their lives a little bit more easy. So it's just a little bit of information that we can share. My name is Eric Morton. Uh, I can be reached at 404 9310 I'm available for speaking engagements. Uh, I'm available to help train uh, your, 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 your managers and uh, people who are going to be in uh, supervisor positions uh, more for, to help out. So uh, definitely an expert trainer to help those people to gain the skills that they can use to make your organization and make your own organization successful. So I just want to share that with you. Thank you.